Hey there guys, in today's video, I wanted to talk to you about what are some of my recommendations for the most important tools that you can have in your Parrot toy making toolbox. So these are gonna be items that I use to make toys on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, and also to maintain Parrot toys on a day-to-day -day basis. So if that's something you guys are interested in seeing, make sure to stick around, because that's gonna be coming up right after this. guys, this is Jack over at High Red Bird, where I am tirelessly working to find new ways to make the keeping of exotic animals and pets more exciting, more affordable, and ultimately more enjoyable. In today's video, I wanted to walk you guys through some of my recommendations for the most used tools in my parrot toy making toolbox. These are gonna be items that I use regularly. Um, they have a lot of value, a lot of different functions that I will use them for. So I highly recommend these items to be a part of your Parrot toy making toolbox. Most of these items work great for building toys from scratch, but even if you are not at the point of building toys from scratch, uh, a lot of these things are also useful for maintaining purchased pre-made toys. So if that's something you guys want to see, um, you guys wanna make sure that you pay attention to this video. Now the good news is for any of these items, if you guys see these items, you think, oh my goodness, I need to have that, but I don't already and I don't know where to get it. Uh, I will actually put links to all of the items that I'm gonna show you in the description section down below so you could purchase any of those items. Now, before I jump into this list, one thing I want to point out, uh, first of all, it is important that you, as your bird's owner, ensure that the toys that you are giving your bird are safe for that bird. Uh, not all toys are going to be safe for every bird, uh, and it really is a study of that individual bird. I have known birds of the same species, same size, same gender, same everything, that have different standards for what they can have in terms of toys. Some birds are going to be a little more destructive. Some birds are going to be a little more prone to uh, maybe getting trapped in toys, maybe interacting with toys in a way that makes you go, what did you do? Uh, some birds are gonna have absolutely no interest in certain items. So it's important for you as your bird's, bird's owner to pay attention to the items you're giving them, make sure that they are safe, and also make sure that they stay safe. Toys don't stay safe as your bird is interacting with them. As they chew on wood blocks, as they fray bits of rope, uh, cotton rope, sisal rope, any of those things, uh, those toys aren't going to be staying safe. So it's important that you not only give your birds toys that are safe for them, but you ensure that they maintain that safety over the life of that toy. You can do that by regularly observing your bird, how it's interacting with its toys. You'll know what items are safe for your bird, and you'll know when you maybe need to pull items for a little bit of maintenance, or uh, sometimes they're too far gone and it's time to just discard that toy in the interest of safety of your bird. With that all being said, uh, let's go ahead and jump into these items that I am going to be showcasing. Now the first item I wanted to show you guys is a pair of scissors. Groundbreaking, I know. Um, when you get a pair of scissors, I recommend getting a pair of scissors just for your parrot supplies and making sure they are a good, sturdy pair of scissors because we usually try to do a lot of different things with our scissors. Um, obviously, I can use a good pair of scissors to cut things like paper, cardstock, uh, even thin leather I can cut with these scissors. Um, but one other thing you'll see, these scissors come to a bit of a point. So if I'm working with something like cardboard, these can be a great option for punching holes in pieces of cardboard, uh, things that are a little bit larger, more cumbersome. Uh, probably the best value of scissors though is gonna be maintaining anything that is on any kind of rope. Cotton rope and sisal rope naturally degrade as your birds interact with and play with those toys. Um, they'll create little bits of fringe, little bits that hang on 
that run the risk of your bird getting potentially ensnared in them. Uh, leg bands can be really, really bad about frayed bits of rope getting caught, getting wrapped up in that. Uh, and of course, it could potentially be something that's appealing for your bird as an ingestion hazard. So having a good pair of scissors so you can go through, trim those frayed bits of rope is going to be a great option. And as you guys can see, the scissors really are going to be working double duty. They're gonna be doing quite a few different things. The next item I wanted to talk to you guys about, I'm gonna go ahead and lump in together both pliers and wire cutters. Uh, now you guys are gonna want a good set of pliers. Uh, I've actually got a variety of different pliers here. I use them for different things. Uh, if you are building your own toys, I've shown you guys how to build a variety of different toys with stainless steel hardware that you can easily pick up at most big box hardware stores. Um, you are going to need the tools to work with it, however, so pliers are going to be a great option. Now I do say I am lumping pliers and wire cutters together because you may end up with something like these needle nose pliers. And again, remember, I love needle nose pliers. If you are installing hardware inside PVC fittings, if you are building your own PVC toys, perches, stands, you're gonna need something that can reach inside of those PVC fittings. So these needle nose pliers are great. And as you guys can see, they have a set of wire cutters built into them. Uh, so these are actually gonna be working double duty as both pliers and wire cutters. Um, you can also use what are called lineman's pliers. These are gonna be a much sturdier plier with that wire cutter built in. These are what I recommend for using when attaching large branches to outdoor aviaries. I've done a video where I've shown you guys how I attach those branches in large outdoor aviaries. So these can be absolutely phenomenal. One thing I do want to point out though, that if you get one of the sets of pliers that are the pliers and wire cutters in one, um, they're not going to do both of those jobs as well as the individual tools. So these needle nose pliers are great, but because of that wire cutter that's built in there, you don't have the same amount of plier that you could use. Um, obviously you can only reach down that far. Any further, you're gonna be running the risk of cutting something, especially if you are working with hanger bolts, screws, any kind of hardware, if you run it into that wire cutter on the pliers, you could potentially strip the screw so you're not able to use it. Uh, the wire cutter is also not going to cut as flush as a normal wire cutter. So if you're doing something, uh, maybe you're using cable ties, maybe you are using uh, that bird poly rope that you wanna make sure you get cut really flush. Uh, you may not wanna use these, you may wanna use a normal pair of wire cutters instead. The next item I wanted to talk to you guys about is one of my favorites. Honestly, I don't think I could do a video on the High Redbird channel without this item. And that is going to be my ratcheting PVC cutters. Uh, these are absolutely phenomenal for cutting through PVC. I've shown you guys how to build a wide variety of tools and useful items for your birds using PVC. We built tabletop stands, play gyms, hanging stands, swings, perches, the options really are limited to your imagination, um, but in order to build those things, you are going to need something to cut that PVC. So a set of PVC cutters is of the utmost importance. Um, now, of course, if you're going to build a single stand, you can cut PVC with something as simple as a hacksaw, um, but these are absolutely incredible. If you are building one stand, I'd still recommend getting them and the difference in how long it takes to make those cuts, how accurate those cuts are, is going to be night and day different. A couple of things I wanna point out about your PVC cutters. First of all, I recommend only ratcheting PVC cutters. Um, it is possible to get PVC cutters where you basically just squeeze and it'll cut through the entire pipe. But the ratcheting PVC cutters, they're always gonna have this blade so you can see it works its way down. That means you're not having to make the entire cut all at once. Now the good news is once this blade is pressed up against your PVC pipe, it's not going to move, it's not going to shift. So I would put my PVC pipe in place, I would ratchet it down. When I'm getting close, I would make sure I'm lined up perfectly with where I want it. The next ratchet will lock it in place. And then I cut it when I'm ready to go, pop it open, make my next cut. 
There are a couple of things you wanna look for though in your PVC cutters. Uh, you wanna make sure that your blade is easily removable, easily changeable. Um, run a quick YouTube search on the particular set of PVC cutters you are wanting to use. See how easy it is to change the blade. Um, if you can't find a video where they change the blade in real time or photos where they literally show you step one, two, three, um, I, I'd probably look at another one because there are some that can be a little bit difficult. Um, this one here is great. Uh, if you let your blade get dull, what's gonna happen is the next time you go to cut PVC, instead of cutting through it cleanly, the pressure is just gonna make it snap. You'll get PVC shrapnel that explodes everywhere. It's not a safe thing to do. So make sure your blade is easily changeable. You also wanna make sure that you have uh, paid attention to the range of sizes your PVC cutters will cut. Not all PVC cutters cut the same range of PVC pipe. These PVC cutters cut up to one and five eighths inch. One thing I will warn you guys right now, when it lists that upper maximum, it will cut it. The question is how well and how easy that's gonna be on you. So I have cut one and a half inch PVC with these cutters, um, but it is a little bit cumbersome. So at the one and five eighths inch max outer diameter, Yes, it'll do it, but you know, an inch and a half PVC is a little bit tricky. That being said, for half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch PVC, I can cut all of those with this one cutter. Works phenomenally for all of those. So just pay attention to that. The next item you're gonna want if you're building any kind of parrot toys, you're going to want a quality drill. You're gonna want a good, sturdy drill. Um, a corded drill will work fine. You're just limited to the places you can work with it. If you're getting a battery operated drill, make sure that you have one with a decent battery life. And you may wanna go ahead and invest in a backup battery because general rule of thumb, if you're really, really excited about building parrot toys and you go to pick up your drill, that's when the battery's going to be dead. And it's almost an inverse relationship. The more excited you are about building parrot toys, the higher the likelihood that that battery will be dead. But a quality drill is going to be important for working with a variety of different materials. Uh, realistically, how many parrot toys are, take items, drill holes in them, string them on other items. Um, whether or not you are working with small birds, if you have budgies or cockatiels and you can build toys for them on shoelaces, or if you are working with large macaws and you have to build their toys on stainless steel chain. Having the ability to put holes in those items, drill through them is going to be great. Um, a drill is going to work on plastic items. It's going to work on wooden items. Uh, just make sure that the items you're using are safe for your bird to get. Um, I use my drill for building my PVC toys when I need to drill into fittings, to put in toy holders to make uh, places where I can attach food bowls, water bowls, um, all of those items, the drill is going to be incredibly useful. The only way a drill works though is if you have drill bits. And I am going to encourage you guys to go ahead and purchase a drill bit set. Uh, if you are planning on building any variety of parrot toys, please start from the beginning, just get a set of drill bits um, because if you don't do that, if you don't take that wonderful advice, what may happen is you may end up with these drill bits of all different colors. Now, the reason that that is an issue is because a single drill bit versus a drill bit set is going to be far more expensive. Now, if you tell yourself that you are gonna be good with, I just need this one drill bit, um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna then need just one more drill bit and just one more drill bit. And eventually you'll have spent double what the set of drill bits was to only have four drill bits before you eventually just snap and purchase uh, a set of drill bits. Uh, now the great thing about having a set is one, they match. Um, so if that is going to bother you, if all your drill bits are different colors, different materials, um, buying a set, make sure that they all match. But two, if you buy a set, they usually will come with a holder, uh, a great way to keep those drill bits organized. So I highly, highly, highly recommend starting off with a set of drill bits. 
Now the next item I wanna show you guys is actually one of my favorite parrot toy making tools. In fact, I've done a full review on this item alone. That is going to be my Crocodile Big Bite. Now this is sold at most craft stores uh, as a scrapbooking tool. Let me tell you right now, they're wrong. This is the ultimate parrot toy making tool. So a couple of things that this does really, really well. First of all, it's incredibly sturdy. Um, because it has this larger handle, you can get a good amount of leverage. So even if you don't feel as strong, um, you can work with this a lot easier than you could a, you know, a handheld hole punch. Uh, the Big Bite has a variety of different sizes. So you can see there's that small size. Uh, if you like to build toys for small parrots using things like uh, paper straws, plastic straws, that smaller size is going to be great for that. Um, it'll actually punch through the straw without destroying the straw, but you can also go the larger size um, to do what would be considered a normal hole punch size. Um, it does all of those great. Because of the length of the handle, you get a good amount of leverage. So even if you don't feel that you're that strong, you're gonna be able to use this to punch through a variety of things. Uh, when I did a review of this, I showed you guys punching through one, five, 10 pieces of cardstock at once. It went like butter. We punched through small, uh, thin pieces of leather. We punched through all kinds of popsicle sticks, uh, different craft sticks. This thing does amazing. Another really nice thing it has, it has this guide here at the bottom, so you can set it at the length that you want. Um, and then that way, if you're doing multiple items, you wanna make sure that they're all similar, you can line them up and use that guy to very quickly punch everything at the same size. And because you have so much throat space inside this item, you can basically push those items in to center those holes on much larger items than you would normally be able to if you were building something like, uh, if you were building a toy and using a handheld hole punch. If I was using a full-sized paper plate, I would be able to do a punch smack in the center all around the sides with no issues with this. So I cannot recommend this item enough. Um, I know multiple people that have one of these. I have not yet met somebody who makes parrot toys who does not love this as one of the most used tools in their parrot toy making arsenal. One of my favorite things to recommend to people, even if it's not that exciting, is going to be a nylon bristle brush. I cannot recommend these enough. Um, this isn't gonna help you build parrot toys, but it is going to help you to maintain parrot toys uh, to get a little more life out of them, a little more longevity. Now, the great thing about these is they can scour really well. Um, if you get the ones with the softer bristles, they can reach into the nooks and crannies of smaller toy pieces, um, but you can also get some that are pretty rigid. Um, I'll use handheld ones like this for small parrot toys, but I'll even get things like toilet brushes, um, which is a really sturdy brush with a really rigid bristle. And I'll use those for uh, cleaning all sorts of things, cleaning, you know, macaw toys, cleaning macaw water bowls. Um, a heavy duty brush like that is going to be one of my favorite things. I do want to point out, you can get these in a variety of colors. So I do recommend finding a way to identify them as your bird's cleaning brush. Um, because if you have a brush for cleaning poop off of bird toys and your significant other ends up using it to clean the dishes one night, you're gonna be left in a scenario where you wonder if you're gonna tell them because if you tell them you're gonna get yelled at because you didn't clearly label the brush even though you knew what the system was because the blue brush was supposed to be for the parrot toys and you weren't supposed to use that for dishes but your significant other didn't know that. So uh, you can also just use a Sharpie to mark them very, very clearly and then you don't have to be the victim of my entirely hypothetical scenario. Um, nylon bristle brushes are going to be one of your best friends in terms of keeping any kind of bird. They really do just make it so much easier to take care of so many different things. All right, now that is my list of recommended items for starting uh, building parrot toys. These are the items that I use the most 
But I wanna be clear, these are not the only items that I use for my parrot toy making. In fact, there's probably some items that a lot of other parrot toy makers would say, I am forgetting. So if you build parrot toys and there are any items that you think are incredibly useful, that you are happy to have, or quite frankly, you would not build parrot toys without, go ahead and leave suggestions in the comment section down below. We can all learn from each other and I think there are a lot of other really useful items that a lot of people need to know about. Now, if you guys would like any of these items and you don't already have them, like I said, I will put links to these items in the description section down below, make it easier for you guys to find them. Uh, and then you can have all of the tools in your arsenal that you need to build the most amazing parrot toys. Um, and I think that's probably the most exciting thing about this. Uh, you get to build fun things that your birds can then interact with, which is honestly one of my favorite parts. I do want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you give it a thumbs up, if you comment on the video, it actually helps me through the YouTube algorithm reach other people. And if you think this information is useful, we definitely want to try to share it with as many people as possible. If you like the types of videos that I put out, you want to make sure that you subscribe to the High Redbird YouTube channel. I put out new videos every single week. You guys do not want to miss out on any of this fun content, and I hope to see you guys next time. I need time. to say thank you to my Patreon patrons for helping to make these videos possible. You can find out more by visiting High Redbird on Patreon or clicking the link in the description section down below if you would like more information. Thanks! Mm -hmm.